Over the last couple of weeks, there's been enormous focus on bond yields and the 10-year Treasury yield going for um, its lows of 0.64 of a, of a percent to as high as the other day, 1.60%. And what does this all mean? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about what the rise in bond yields mean historically, where have bond yields been, and are we at the end of the safe zone in bonds? The bond market has been on a 40-year bull run. Most people don't know that, and most people don't talk about it. But bonds have been on this run since the late 1970s, early 1980s. In 1980, I believe it was August 17th of 1980, 10-year uh, Treasury yield was paying 15.25 of a percent. Could you imagine buying a tax-free bond that pays you 15.25 a percent annually? I mean, you'd be clamoring over that. But if you remember what was going on then, it was stagflation. It was just the end of the Carter administration, the start of the Reagan administration, and we were in an environment where we had declining growth and increase in inflation, and people were just, they were broke. They were broken, and so having the ability to buy a 10-year treasury that paid 15% plus well, for most people, that didn't really happen. And since then, up until here just recently, where bond yields have gotten so low, right around, uh, well, last I saw today was right around 1.41 uh, or so percent, could have been lower today. Uh, that This is the 8th of March of 2021. If you have been in bonds, all this time since 1980 and you just rolled from one 10-year uh, maturity to another 10-year maturity and so on you would have averaged a 6.29 percent of your money if you had invested in august of 2000 or excuse me august of 1980 and up until march of 2021 you would have made an average of 6.29 percent not inflation adjusted, but think about the tax benefit of that. The problem we're running into now is bond yields are going up. And this is signaling the end of a bull run in bonds. So let's talk about the mechanics of a bond. What is involved with bonds? And why have they been such a great place to be for the last 40 years? Well. First of all, when it comes to a bond, there is, it is basically a debt obligation from an organization. So a company or a municipality or a government. It's where they say, hey, we need to borrow some money instead of going to a traditional banking uh, route. They go to uh, the market and they issue a bond. It has a maturity, so it can be anywhere from you know 30 days to 30 years. Um, in the case I'm using uh, the 10 year U.S. Treasury, it is a 10-year maturity. So you buy it, and at maturity, it pays you back your initial investment. And your initial investment is what they call par value. They issue them at $1,000. Now, they can trade above or below that $1,000, and that affects the yield. And the yield is their um, payment to you for borrowing your money. So if you go back to 1980 and you bought a 10-year treasury bond for $1,000 and you held that for 10 years, you were paid on, an, in that case, depending if the bond just sat still at $1,000 par, you made 15 and a quarter percent on your money each year. <laughs> Who wouldn't take that right now, right? Well, today, when they issue 10-year treasuries, they issue 10-year treasuries at a par value of $1,000 but they're only paying like 1.40%, which is nothing compared to the cost of inflation and the cost of goods. You're really not making money on your money anymore in a 10-year treasury. 
bonds are rated, and the companies like Moody's and S&P, Standard & Poor's, rate these bonds. And they rate from investment grade, which is uh, triple B and above, so to give you a scale, uh, triple A is the best rated bond you could get, a double A is the second best, single A, and then it goes to triple B. Below triple B is referred to as junk bonds. Now, junk bonds are... Um, became famous back in the 80s because like for instance Michael Milken provided um, bonds to Sam Walton of Walmart and they were referred to as junk bonds higher risk higher level of potential for default and because of that you they had to pay a higher yield so when you go out and you look for a high yield bond fund or a high yield bond, you're going to see a difference in the yield in comparison to an investment grade bond. And that difference is the spread. And what that spread represents is the amount of risk and default risk you're potentially taking with that bond. So if you're chasing yield, most likely you're going out in duration, so time till maturity. And if you're really being aggressive, you're going below investment grade and you're looking for high yield junk type bonds. Bonds have historically been a way to trim risk in a portfolio. You've heard where people as you get older you should increase your bond exposure, lower your equity exposure, and trim your risk as you get closer and closer to retirement. And over the last 40 years it made, has made a lot of sense. I mean, you've made money in bonds over the last 40 years if you've held them. The problem is today with the traditional asset allocation models of 60-40, 60% equities, 40% bonds, it's actually becoming a well, a risk of holding bonds. Because if you think about it, the way bonds work is like a teeter-totter. The yield is on the left, the bond value is on the right, and when the yield goes up, the bond value goes down. Well, over the last 40 years, that yield has gone down and that bond value has gone up. Well, now we're in a different market when it comes to bonds. We're actually in a bear market with bonds. And as yields move higher, especially uh, longer duration bonds, so longer maturity bonds, that yield goes up and you lose value. You lose money in that bond. And the problem with this is, is that the majority of Americans who invest in a 401k or uh, IRAs or in the market and they run a diversified portfolio are using bonds as a portion of their portfolio. And depending on their risk tolerance, they're using a lot of bonds. Well, this is an asset that is now in a negative convexity environment. Portfolio allocation is really starting to be well questioned. Uh, historically, uh, you ran a, a diversified portfolio. Maybe it's a moderate allocation of 60% equities, 40% bonds. And that bond portion cut down the risk or the volatility of the overall portfolio be, uh, by trimming, because it was such a stable um, asset class compared to equities, depending on the type of equities, that movement in equities would uh, be tempered if it was on the downside. It would be balanced out by the bond side of things. Well, today in the environment we're in, where interest rates are so low and bond values are actually declining in relation to yields rising, we're now seeing moderate allocation portfolios that were moderate, a 60-40 split, are now being really looking at the risk in the bond market are actually becoming more ag moderate aggressive or aggressive portfolios depending on the types of bonds. And the, this is where I believe asset allocation and how you allocate your risk is really needing to be really looked at. And the reason being is the bond market is starting to enter a bear market environment. Now, I believe it's been falsely, the yields have been falsely kept down and this bond you know, rally or the bond uh, bull market for the last 40 years has been partially um, controlled by the Fed. Um, their ability to go out and just buy bonds and increase their balance sheet has created a lower yielding 
bond environment. Well, now that's starting to slow. And as people need yield, and as more people retire, especially the baby boomer group, they're looking for yield, they're looking for income, and they're not getting it in the bond market. So they're now going out on the risk spectrum. So what I look at as a, a traditional 60-40 allocation to get the same level of return over, say, a three to five, 10 year period of time, it, you have to actually tweak that allocation from a 60-40 to maybe more of a 80-20. And in some cases, depending on the income needs of the, the, the retiree, you may have to be all equities. And in this environment where you're seeing bond values decline and you're seeing spikes in the 10-year treasury yield and other bonds, people are having to take more risk in the bond market. And this is where I believe your risk management strategies really need to come into play. And I believe the market, when it comes to bonds, has to get real because there's a great opportunity in rising yields and falling bond prices, and that will continue. So how do you allocate? How do you risk manage this bond market that is slowly price-wise deteriorating and as yields go up uh, and bond values go down what do you where how do you counterbalance this well there's a couple areas one your equity exposure how you're exposed in your equity por portion of your portfolio can be an offset to your bond exposure when you look at the risk um, balance between equities and bonds what you're looking for is you know a five you know say a, a, a five times upside compared to a four times loss so a five to four ratio what you don't want to have is an alice allocation model that has a high uh, loss ratio say um, you could lose uh, five uh, or four in comparison to winning uh, five overall you get what I'm saying? My point is that balance between risk on the on each side is really key. So a way you can build your your bond portion or your risk your bond portion of your portfolio is to look at floating rate. If we believe yields will go up over time and for quite a while, then you want a asset that will float up. So tips treasury inflation protection or floating rate uh, bonds are something to consider. The other side is short-term bonds. Short-term bonds being like two-year time frame, because the Fed is keeping interest rates so low, the two-year and lower or shorter duration is actually going down in yield, which is pushing the price of the value of the bond up. That is a place to consider. And then third, it's your equity exposure, looking for companies that are growing in the cycle, depending on what stage of the cycle we're in, you're allocating to those areas. So right now, the commodity market is doing great. As dollar declines, commodities do well. Uh, Energy is doing great. We're seeing retail exposure doing well, along with travel. And as the vaccine rolls out and people get more comfortable with uh, traveling again, we're gonna see all these three areas uh, going up in value. But the bond market, especially the investment grade market, is getting beaten up. And this is where I think there's an opportunity to capitalize in a rising interest rate market with rising interest rate um, uh, assets, uh, along with overweighting and underweighting your equity and bond exposure. The key to all this is you got to pay attention. This is a different world. In an environment where we're now entering a bear market in the bond market, a lot of retirees, well, their portfolios are potentially in jeopardy. And this is where you really need to reach out to your financial advisor uh, and get some guidance and some understanding. And understand, this is a long-term type of situation with rising interest rates, rising yield compared to falling bond values. In the end, take action. Don't wait around. 
This time, well, this time is now.